so hey everyone, um, I'm Syed, it's great to be here, and I work as a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, leading and growing an open source community. Um, so uh, let me go to the next slide. Please. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about what open source is and what uh, does community leadership mean. Uh, so as contributors to a project become more familiar with how the project works, they may wish to become more active in helping the project grow. Ultimately, this means they will be taking on more responsibilities within the project. Uh, so today we are going, uh, going to discuss in more detail what this means, what it means uh, that is to lead an open source project and our community. Uh, the fact is that contributing to an open source project and leading that project are two completely different modes of engaging with that project. Um, so let me try to explain uh, why. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, so as a contributor to an open source project, your duties to the project may be more or less straightforward, uh, fix bugs, answer questions in the project's channel, etc. cetera. Um, when assuming a position of leadership in the project, your real role becomes more comprehensive. Uh, you may have to drive technical direction, begin speaking with the authority uh, for the project in public venues, such as conferences, initiate programs to recruit more project members, or change the project's processes and policies. So in short, you are now assuming increased uh, responsibility for a project's uh, success or failure. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So why why do we want to do that? Why do we want to take on responsibility for a project and uh, a community success? Uh, there are many reasons to take on a leadership position uh, in your favorite open source project. Uh, it may range from the needs of your employers to, the, to your own personal joy. Uh, as you consider taking on a leadership position in the project, uh, you might want to take some time to think through your motivations for doing so. Having a good understanding of uh, why you want to lead will help you choose uh, the best places uh, for you to apply those skills and interests in the project. Uh, it might be a conflict resolution or better issue triaging processes to make sure that uh, the users are getting more help quickly. Um, and it's no secret that an in, and that leading an open source project has many tangible benefits when it comes to seeking employment, uh, but also many individuals choose a leadership position for the simple reason that they appreciate their uh, social connections in the project's community and wish to be of greater service to others in this community. So if you move to this next slide, um, we will explore some of the, the goals for today. Uh, so we will be talking about the responsibilities leaders have, uh, the transition pathway from contributor to leader, and some ways in which excellent leaders help their project avoid common social uh, challenges. So our goals for today include understanding common challenges associated with expanding, maintaining, and popularizing an open source project, uh, exploring steps how new community leaders can begin to address those challenges, and identify steps where leaders can uh, take to achieve project success. So an additional note over here would be that I personally can't guarantee that you will leave our time together equipped with everything uh, that you could possibly know uh, about being a project or community leader. Uh, every project is different, and I don't know every bit of advice that can help you lead each of these different individual projects. So you will need to translate this advice into your own context. Uh, what we are going to do today is examine the most common avenues for meeting uh, the challenges new leaders face, uh, general pathways for getting started that we have found uh, to be the most fruitful across communities. Um, so moving on to the next slide, uh, we would be, I will begin by stressing uh, that anyone interested in assuming a leadership role in a community driven uh, project will need to begin by asking three fundamental questions about that project. Uh, these are, how can you expand the project uh, add uh, that is add contributors and increase participation in the project? How can you maintain the project? That is ensure that your project is, project's growth is sustainable and that the project stays on course on pursuit of its mission and vision. 
And how can you popularize the project uh, that is increase its visibility, make it an appealing uh, destination for users and contributors, and keep it relevant in an ever-growing uh, ecosystem? Uh, for the remainder of our session today, we will focus on each of these three questions. Uh, so, the first uh, thing that we will be, uh, the, the first question that we will be talking about is the, so, Nika, can you, uh, like, move to, yeah, can you just move to slide 11? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so let's begin uh, with the challenge of expanding the community or like how do you increase community participation and contribution um, on the next slide uh, Yeah, so we, we would be talking about two types of challenges here uh, one is community challenges and the other one is technical challenges so uh, on community challenges include things like undocumented or insider information or what we call folk wisdom. Uh, this talks about excessive and undocumented insider information or folk wisdom, which makes newcomers uh, not have enough context and lacking that context makes them feel excluded. Uh, then there is the issue of unwelcome social dynamics. How, un how welcome do you feel uh, when you join the community, uh, especially how welcome do new contributors feel when they join, to the, join the community? Perhaps uh, the project is not as inclusive as it could be. Uh, undifferentiated con contributor base. Communities lacking a diverse contributor base may not uh, seem welcoming to newcomers, especially those from underrepresented groups. Uh, this means diversity along all axes, things like types of self skill set, vendor diversity, number of industries represented, gender diversity, racial diversity, geographic diversity, and the list can go on. So when working to growing to grow your community, if it appears that the community is only comprised of one type of contributor, people who are not uh, like the existing contributor base may not feel very comfortable joining. Um, and the most obvious uh, challenge again is language barriers. Communities that uh, communicate in only one language can be intimidating for those who don't speak that language. Uh, moving to the next slide, uh, uh, we talk about the technical challenges so this includes lack of clear onboarding and getting started documentation uh, lack of clear documentation on ways to get started and deter newcomers uh, aligning contributors with project needs aligning contributors with different skills to the most appropriate domains inside the project can be challenging uh, finding contributors with specific domain knowledge can be another challenging part like how do you find additional contributors with specific domain knowledge of very specialized use cases. Uh, that might be really difficult at times. Uh, a project's code base may be directed at, at, at specialized use cases. The project might be relatively niche. So locating additional contributors who share its typical use cases might be really, really difficult. Um, then again, there is unintended use cases, uh, which well, users might be applying a project software uh, to situations where the project's founders have never thought about. Uh, so the founders may, might themselves be limiting their outreach. Um, so let's move on uh, to talk about uh, contributor pathways. So every project and community will uh, need to address these challenges in ways that are most effective for them. However, in general, we said this beginning uh, to address these uh, challenges by examining your project's contributor pathways. So in the next slide, uh, we'll talk about what these are. So opportunities for new volunteers uh, usually begin to lending their unique talents to an uh, open source project are called uh, pro a projects uh, contributor pathways. So the greater the number of contributor pathways that your project features, the more likely it is to recruit participants with various skills uh, required for the project success. So when you're thinking of ways to expand your project, Focusing on contributor pathways is a great place to begin with. Uh, so in the next slide, uh, let's uh, look at, uh, take a look at some common contributor pathways. So firstly, here are some pathways with community focus, uh, things like documenting software processes, uh, onboarding and mentoring new members, localizing content into various languages, 
copywriting, managing social media, uh, organizing events. So does your project currently offer new and existing contributors opportunities to contribute rewardingly or even take ownership of work in each of these pathways? Uh, that's, the, the, that's the question over here. So again, in the next slide, uh, let's again examine some pathways with a more technical focus. So some of the technical pathways might include adding a new feature and documentation, fixing existing bugs and triaging issues, uh, refactoring existing work to improve it, performing quality assurance, improving user interface and user experience, release engineering, creating and maintaining project roadmap, code and user interface lo uh, localization and so on. So again, ask yourselves, does your project currently offer new and existing contributors opportunities to contribute rewardingly to or even take ownership of work in each of these pathways? Uh, if not, one general way to begin uh, expanding your project is by making concerned, uh, as concerted efforts to formally like refine, document, and advertise these contributor pathways. So uh, in the, in the moving on, uh, in the next uh, slide, let's explore uh, these challenges uh, associated with maintaining a project, uh, sustaining its growth, uh, and uh, as our prior like expansion efforts succeed. Right. So in the next slide, now we look at some of the common challenges again. Uh, so these include additional infrastructure and overhead, adding additional tooling and infrastructure creates additional work of coordinating participants time otherwise uh, which could have been spent in uh, the project code for especially for smaller leaders who may have to take on responsibilities for deploying and maintaining these new systems in addition uh, to coordinating volunteer work. Um, then there comes the challenge of preserving community intimacy. Uh, preserving the intimacy of a community uh, is very important because it's this community intimacy that makes it so appealing and it requires more care as the community keeps on expanding. So very few people may actually know one another uh, and when this starts happening, social bonds weaken. Um, the next thing is keeping a growing number of participants involved. So keeping all participants informed about project development uh, requires more time and effort as that community is large managing competing visions for the project. Uh, as a community grows, competing visions for the project might create contributor tension, uh, especially people who are newer to the project might feel confused where, where should they uh, like proceed ahead with, uh, which vision can they focus on. Um, and the last point again is architecting and scaling a mission and vision. Projects that begin as a personal hobby don't always have explicit and clearly defined community mission and vision statement. Without these, the projects don't scale well. Um, moving on, uh, let's talk about uh, governance models. Um, so in the next slide, yeah. So every project and community will need to address these challenges in ways that are most effective for them. However, in general, we suggest uh, beginning to address these challenges by examining your project's governance model. The specific uh, combination of uh, rules and customs that define who gets to do what and how they're supposed to do it is called a uh, project governance model. Uh, the better you understand the project's governance model, the greater your chances of successfully helping that project evolve. So as you are looking for ways to help sustain project growth and success, we recommend beginning by examining your project's governance models. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we uh, talk about six common governance models found in open source projects. So every project has a governance model, uh, even ones that say that they don't really have one. Uh, so begin by pinning down specific details of the way the project is running today. Uh, here's a list of uh, the six most common types of governance models, uh, especially in open source projects. Uh, we don't have the time uh, to explore the individual model. However, it suffice to say that uh, knowing how your project is running and who is making decisions is a perfect way to begin thinking about making the project more sustainable. 
uh, if your project relies on too few people, if decisions aren't being made in the most effective way, then begin by addressing these issues. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, we, we talk about the dimensions of governance. So fundamentally, you will need to think, uh, you need to begin thinking about various roles people play in the community and the various policies and procedures that govern and direct people in those roles. Uh, roles are the specific functions and contributors perform in and for the project. Uh, roles have rights, responsibilities, and expectations around them. Make sure that these are explicitly documented. Uh, policies and procedures are the specific rules and processes that direct people in particular roles and define the limits of acceptable behavior for the project, its best practices, etc. Uh, so make sure that these are also explicitly documented. Uh, simply documenting roles policies and procedures will go a long way toward uh, helping your project become more sustainable. And uh, finally, moving on to the next uh, slide, uh, we talk about popularizing. How do you popularize a project? Uh, how do you increase a project's visibility, making it an appealing destination for users and, and contributors, and keeping it relevant in an ever-growing ecosystem? Uh, so in the next, uh, next slide, we again talk about uh, the, some of the common challenges. Uh, so these include increased competition for contributors' time and energy. Uh, con competing for contributors' time, attention, energy is becoming more difficult than ever as the number of open source projects increases globally. Uh, community materials available uh, in a limited number of languages. So when projects become popular, uh, they connect with, a, with diverse groups of contributors. But often what happens is that the project materials are only available in a limited number of languages. And if your community is not communicating in English, many people may not even be aware that it exists. And this is a very common challenge across uh, all, like most major uh, projects, I would say probably. Um, then there is a growing threat of maintainer burnout. As a project becomes more popular, maintainers might experience burnout when trying to keep pace with it. Uh, mismatched expectations between enterprise and users and hobbies is always a big challenge. And then there is the proliferation of platforms for user engagement. Uh, finding the best ways to reach of potential users and contributors can be really time consuming, uh, especially given the way people choose to consume information. Uh, so. Uh, users now uh, expect to hear things about, uh, like hear about things on things like on platforms like Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Um, so figuring out where to meet people and where they are uh, when you are, uh, like, and where you are, it's, it's it's a very tricky question, and that is that becomes a very big challenge for the community. Um, so let's move on uh, since we are almost out of time. Let's talk about reward models. In the and so to interrupt uh, you, but we have only yeah. one more minute and we need to, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. So uh, as with other challenges we addressed so far, uh, we could discuss many uh, things uh, here, but in general, we have found that focusing on a project reward models is a great place to begin with. Uh, so I won't talk much about reward models because uh, we don't have much time over here. Uh, so. Alinka, if you could just uh, move forward uh, a couple of slides uh, to slide number 29. That, yeah. So, yeah. So, there's an overview of uh, uh, general kinds of challenges. Uh, this is this is more of uh, just an overview of the different types of challenges that you're going to face as you assume a leadership role. Uh, expanding the community, maintaining that growth sustainably, and popularizing a project along that way. Uh, we are already out of time, uh, but yeah, just uh, to just uh, to give you a sense of like to do a quick review. Uh, here's uh, what we might have next. So in the next slides, we I just wanted to talk about measuring success, but I knew I would be out of time. So uh, here are just a few uh, keywords to remember when tracking the technical contributions. And if we move forward uh, a couple of slides, um, again, I did a quick workload of how you can track non-technical contributions. 
so yeah and in the end uh i i would just uh, want to say that you know people choose to lead open source projects for various reasons including organizational needs a sense of personal responsibility or personal fulfillment by choosing to lead an open source project you or or especially assume the an increased responsibility for that project success or failure new community leaders face challenges related to expanding maintaining and popularizing their project and they can begin to address these challenges by examining their project contribution pathways governance models and reward models so uh, they will need to determine the best way to gather feedback from their communities and to communicate the value and success of their work to various stakeholders um so that with that i would like to conclude my talk uh, or i would be sharing the slides on the discord channel and with lenka uh, so that uh, you can also share it okay